Welcome. We have a water cool heat killer 5 pro water block for the GeForce RTX 4090 Founders Edition. In this episode, we will unbox the heat killer water block and then install it onto the Founders Edition 4090 PCB. We will then install the card in our test system, fill the custom loop, and perform testing to obtain thermal, power, and performance results. We will also lower and raise the power limit and undervolt and overclock the card. This is the Vector Network, and let's begin. This water cool heat killer 5 pro water block is compatible with the RTX 4090 Founders Edition. The water block has a modular base plate with a dual layer inflow and symmetrical cooling design. The water block is designed to actively cool the GPU, memory, and power stages and passively cool the PCB hotspots that are found on the back side of the card. One tab and we can open the box. The required tools are shown right on top. What's in the box is a tube of Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Thermal Paste, the water block and backplate itself, which we will put aside for now, an ARGB removable adapter cable, two packages of CNC machine thermal pads, one for the front side and the other for the back side of the PCB, and a set of mounting parts, which includes all the screws and washers needed for installation. The scope of delivery includes the Heat Killer 5 Pro ARGB nickel plated copper water block with a plexiglass and black anodized aluminum shell, the Heat Killer 5 Pro backplate in the same black anodized aluminum, and the dual slot IO bracket. The Heat Killer 5 Pro water block was designed to not have any of the PCB or screws visible. Together with the backplate in the same black anodized aluminum material, the cooler is designed to appear as a cohesive unit. In addition, the connection threads are integrated on the side of the terminal. The water block has a dual layer symmetrical inflow design. The splitting of the water on two levels with wide and symmetrical flow paths are intended to provide a better and more optimized flow rate. Before installation, let's add two plugs to the terminal. The installation begins by first removing five torque head screws on the back plate. From there, we can then remove the branded side bracket, which reveals another torque screw to remove. Then we can lift up and take off the back plate. Keep in mind there are two plastic spacers to remove that are not used for installation. From there, let's slide down the IO bracket one slot by first removing the three Torx screws and then putting them back. Next are the front side thermal pads. These are all one millimeter thick pads. Making sure to peel the plastic film off both sides of the thermal pad and placing it directly on the PCB. Once that is finished, we can apply some Noctua NTH2 thermal paste. And then we can drop the PCB right on top. From there, let's gather all the mounting materials provided in the box. And start with the metal washers and making sure the black foam side is facing down. Let's screw the four torque screws around the processor in a manner that helps apply tension evenly. One more washer and screw on the side near the I.O. bracket. Next, let's apply the back side thermal pads for the back plate. The square one for the processor is two millimeters thick and the rest are each one and a half millimeters thick. Once the thermal pads are in place, we can drop the back plate right on top and secure it to the PCB and water block with the previously removed six torque screws and two more from the mounting parts. Stay tuned as the fill followed by the testing is coming up right now.
for fittings, let's go ahead and add two EKWB Torque 90 degree adapters and two Coolance Quick Disconnect male fittings. Let's drop the RTX 4090 in our AM5 test system and attach the Quick Disconnect fittings. Let's use Aqua Computer Double Protect Ultra Coolant in red. Click on the link in the top right hand corner for the RTX 4090 Founders Edition Full Teardown and Thermals video. The coolant is used for its combination of effectiveness and color variety. Excessive bubbling may be seen during the fill footage for effect. For testing, the bubbles have been bled out and or dissipated by itself overnight and ensure that the coolant is filled to the brim in the reservoir. To obtain the results, 3D Mark Speedway stress test was run on an open air test bench with ambient room temperature at 21 degrees Celsius. Cyberpunk 2077 overdrive mode benchmark may be shown on screen for a change and variety of visuals. For 100% power limit stock thermals, the GPU core temperature rose 23 degrees Celsius from an idle 26 to 49 degrees Celsius under load. The GPU memory temperature rose 22 degrees Celsius from an idle 30 to 52 degrees Celsius under load. Lowering the power limit to 70%, the GPU core and memory temperatures were 7 and 4 degrees Celsius lower, respectively, compared to 100% power limit. Undervolting the car to 0.95 millivolts and adding 200 megahertz to the core to arrive at the targeted 2735 megahertz core clock, the GPU core and memory temperatures were 5 and 2 degrees Celsius lower, respectively, compared to 100% power limit. Overclocking by increasing the power limit to 130% and adding 200 megahertz to the core and 800 megahertz to the memory clock, the GPU core and memory temperatures were effectively the same and within margin of error compared to 100% power limit. The 100% power limit is at 450 watts. Undervolting the car reduces the wattage from approximately 410 at 91% to 340 at 75% a 70 watt or 17% reduction. Frames per second was recorded during 3D Mark Speedway stress test. As stock, the FPS was 98, and at 80% power limit, the FPS was 96, a 2 FPS or 2% reduction. Stay tuned for upcoming episodes as the plan is to further install this RTX 4090 Founders Edition with a Watercool Heat Killer 5 Pro into a custom loop Watercool PC build. Like the video by clicking the like button, if this is your first time here, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. This is the Vector Network. Please click on the bell for a notification when the next episode airs. Click on the links here for more videos like this, including video card and water cooling component teardowns, unboxings, and thermal testing for water-cooled PC builds. Thank you, and I'll see you at the next episode.